I'm Chance Carter, and my research question was, what is keeping people in poverty in the United States? <clears throat> poverty in the United States. The Heritage Report states that taxpayers have spent over $22 trillion on programs to combat poverty in the past 50 years. From 1971 to 2014, the population of people in poverty only increased by 1% in the South, grew by 4% in the West, and the Northeast and Midwest stayed pretty much unchanged. As of 2021, the bottom 50% of American families controlled only about 2.4% of, of the country's overall wealth. This figure, put out by the U.S. Census Report, shows that in 1959, the number of Americans living in poverty was just below 40 million. In 2020, that number is still sitting right below 40 million. While the trend of the line moves up and down, this figure helps communicate the lack of quantitative and, lacking and lasting success we have seen in combating poverty. This leads me to my claim that a new approach must be taking, taken in order to stop the cycle of poverty in the United States. Some contributing factors to the cycle of poverty is childhood development, the culture of poverty, and implications of environment. Childhood development. One factor within childhood development is the likelihood of conformity in adolescence. During adolescence, the likelihood of conforming to social influences, both peer and parental, is already very high. Negative behaviors like smoking and not wearing a seatbelt are likely to be repeated by adolescents when those behaviors are observed in their parents or peers. This means that if adolescents are raised in households or community, communities where bad financial decisions are made, that they are more likely to make those same bad decisions and continue the cycle. Also, the data clearly admits the conclusion that an inverse relationship between boys' degree of conformity and the socioeconomic status of their families, meaning that parents with little income with parental income being a determinant in the level of conformity seen in their children, their children will be less likely to embrace their individuality and to fall into the same system as their parents. There's also a relationship between parental income and education, with low parental income being associated with fewer years of schooling, lower chance of graduating school, and lower college attendance. Considering that higher education often contributes to higher paying jobs and financial independence, being born into a low-income family may many times predispose children into becoming impoverished. The culture of poverty. Scarcity creates a similar psychology for everyone struggling to manage with less than they need. A lack of resources is a common denominator for the psychology of those in poverty. They are forced to prior prioritize only their basic necessities rather than being able to focus on simple pleasures. This creates a culture of unhappy and unfulfilled people who are often consumed by financial burden and worry. Implications of environment. In Chinese, poverty translates as falling into a harsh environment or any environment that one cannot shake off due to little income or wealth. This is a poverty trap. Another definition for poverty trap is if poverty becomes self-reinforcing when the poor's equilibrium behaviors perpetuate low standards of living, meaning that being in a low-income environment often limits the opportunities to escape that environment, leading many people to be stuck in a perpetual cycle of scarcity. One three-factor environmental approach is made up of opportunity, empowerment, and security, with opportunity including things like options and demand for employment, empowerment including things like level of education available and community outreach programs, and security including things like availability of local resources and the amount of savings held by those in poverty. Without improvements in these three factors, the cycle of poverty will continue to be inescapable. There's also shown to be a problem with basic infrastructure with a growing criticism that national and state governments have failed to provide for social services, education, health care, child nutrition, drinking water, and etc. When people's basic needs are not being met, they struggle to be independent and are forced to rely on outside help, such as financial support from welfare programs. Without improvements in basic infrastructure in low-income communities, poverty will only continue to worsen. Begging the question, how can we expect anyone to succeed when their most basic needs are not being met? Limitations and the issues with the current approach. Impoverishment is a complex process involving the interaction of capitalism, patriarchy, and racism to produce structurally a set of economic, social, and political positions. Poverty, culture, poverty is culturally constructed through ideological discourse as an individual failing and a stigmatized identity. 
Poverty has many confounding variables and does not have a one-size-all-fits solution. There must be gradual, systematic changes made to empower those currently in poverty. The stigma that being poor is only caused by having a failing mindset also needs to be reconsidered in order to make necessary changes. Handing out welfare checks has repeatedly shown to not be effective. Also, our current system is based on a trickle-down economy, meaning that currently wealth is distributed by those who control it and little care is shown to the working class and the goal of businesses in America seems to be to only get richer. There's also a circulating ideology that hard work is all you need to be financially su successful. In actuality, financial success is dependent on nepotism, shady politics, and greed in the U.S. While hard work is an important part of financial independence, it is definitely not the only variable in the equation. Wealthy people continue to point fingers at people in poverty for being lazy and dependent while this is just not true. Necessary changes. Our approach needs to be based upon teaching how to fish instead of handing out fish. Teaching the upcoming generation of children, as well as their parents, the importance of individuality and the importance of setting realistic and achievable goals. There needs to be a reformation of the educational system with lessons designed around achieving long-term success and achieving financial independence, opposed to teaching our school students how to be employees. There also needs a, to be a passing of legislation that is anti-capitalism and puts incentives into the and puts incentives for putting wealth into the hands of the working class in the form of improving infrastructure and community outreach programs. And my work cited, so ready to field your questions. How did you handle the different perspectives in order to reach a conclusion? Well, it's very hard because they're very much opposed to each other. People who control the wealth are very oft often stigmatized the poor for being lazy and dependent, while the people who are poor, you know, stigmatize the people who control the wealth to be, you know, greedy and super, you know, capitalist. But there, it was hard to it was hard to make a uh, conclusion that considered both sides of that and bring it together to create a, an achievable goal. Um, well, I think there's implications for poverty in any community, and because um, everyone, uh, there, there are areas in every community where people are f affected by poverty. I think throughout my findings, I found that it is less, it is less up to uh, the individual and more systematic, and that there needs to be changes to the environment and the, the things around them and their opportunities in order to make uh, changes, the necessary changes. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Yep.